Hi everyone, um, welcome to today's lesson. This is the final part in a three-part series on Alla Prima portrait painting. So basically painting the portrait all at once. Um, last week we were looking at laying in the halftones, kind of general halftones and correcting the relationships between the halftones and the shadows. And this week we're just kind of following on from there um, in order to kind of bring some sense of completion to the piece. So we'll begin with refining smaller forms. Um, so we look at specific details around the nose, the eyes and the mouth, which is where we'll tend to find some of the character in the face. Um, then we'll go back and refine the hair, so add a bit more to the hair. Um, correct the clothing and the background. And finally add some highlights. So Highlights tend to be where the, the piece sort of comes to life, but we, it's good to leave it to the end just because you it forces you to make everything look good before the highlights come in because they are quite a quick way to make things um, more effective. So if we carry on, I've got washed my brushes a bit from last um, the last session um, so that we're starting clean. And I'm just going to go in and once again reinforce some blacks. Um, just because there is a few few sections where they become a little bit grayed out and we don't want to lose them. Um, So once again, just working down this edge of the face. There are limitations to the sorts of blendings you can get away with working out of Prima just because everything's wet. Obviously, when you have the luxury of being able to rework something, you can um, you can kind of leave an edge and go back and correct it. But in this case, we have to try to sort of get as much as possible done. Um, while all the paint is wet. So you will have some issues with sort of smudging and that sort of thing. And that's sort of what you, you learn to cope with. Um, as you get more used to this approach. So the first thing I want to look at is developing the forms in the nose. Um, so at the moment, the nose has a general structure, but we don't have any kind of specifics for what's going on with the nose. Um, so I'm just going to give my brush a little bit more of a clean and then using some of those darker halftone colours that we had from before I'm just going to start rooting around a bit and Kind of developing specific smaller sections of the nose. That's the us finding the bridge. <clears throat> and if I drop back down to the nostril, we want to also define that um, more than we have already.
So at this stage, you can use much smaller brushes. Um, only work sections that need the extra attention. So you don't want the piece to end up overworked. And usually you won't quite have enough time anyway if you're limited to this sort of <clears throat> maybe two hours or an hour or something like that. Um, you can't really afford to add masses of detail. But there are certain sections which will definitely benefit from being uh, developed a bit more. So you can see it's starting to help that that knows to have a bit more specificity about it by doing this stuff. So I can also just define the lower portion, um, well, lower section of that shadow. as well. Just give a bit more specific specificity to that shape. bridge there um, underneath the brow so yeah it's kind of it's come together quite well that smaller form for the nose we'll kind of pull it out a little bit more as we start to add highlights um, for the time being <clears throat> you don't want to overwork it as I say um, I've got other sections we need to carry on with so it's not too bad From there we can jump just across to the eyes, using similar sorts of colours. Slightly too heavy, so I wanted a little bit of a transition that's a little bit too much for the lids. checking my reference. So we've got this lid is sort of doubling back from there. And then sort of just connecting this top eyelid. Same thing happening over the other side. So let's droop the eyelid a little bit too low, which means going back in, getting a darker value again. And we just want to refine shape of the shadow underneath that eye. And that's not too bad. So another quite significant smaller form you tend to find is just above the eyelid the bottom of the brow tends to wrap down and create this crease which usually ends up quite dark and defines the top of the brow so you want to look for that here The 
that's not too bad. We also want to find the eyelid in shadow as well. Having done that makes me think we probably need to lift the top of the brow up a little bit. So we're getting a little bit cramped in the eye space. So these are the sort of uh, kind of smaller corrections we're starting to look for at this stage of the piece. Um, so looking for these kind of undulating forms. So the reverse of that eyelid is this bottom eyelid. We'll also catch the light. So you can see it just gives a little bit more specificity to the forms of the eyelid. Not quite what I wanted to do there. Just trying to go back and add a another slightly darker notch in in here. too bad. And going back to that top lid, um, we can now add a little bit more of a high chroma highlight to it, just as it catches the light. Something like that, there's a little bit of it that's just catching catching the light under the brow. It's a nice little detail to find under there. <coughs> so moving out from the eye, we can start to develop the forms as they connect with that edge of the face in shadow. Also got a little bit too much light in this in this brow, so we can go and darken that as well.
So you can see as you add these details, it just starts to kind of pull everything together a little bit. Make some more sense of what's going on. <clears throat> Most of the forms up in the forehead are reasonably well established. These later um, developments, you want to kind of focus more so in the um, in the kind of central region of the face, as that's where there's a bit more character um, that we're looking for. But you might find there are always some little kind of subtle shifts that are worth trying to capture slightly different sorts of planal things going on. It's just add a little bit more detail as well. The edge of that brow for instance. It's a little bit more light that creeps over the brow rather than where the forehead kind of uh, v is in a bit and we could also look for possibly, possibly a little bit more yellow top of the nose rather than the kind of more pink section down below tends to there tends to be a kind of more yellow uh, a more red tip to the nose whereas the the top of the nose will usually be a bit more yellow a bit more similar to the surrounding values. Um, the lips aren't too bad. The lips we'll probably actually find from uh, highlights in a little mo in a moment. A little bit of a shadow underneath there. Um, but possibly we could maybe find just kind of redefine the darkest, darkest portion of the lips might be the only thing you would you would need to do before adding highlights. But a lot of the lips will be defined when the highlights are added. So you might just just add some little notches of dark in there. It's probably sufficient, I think, for the lips for the time being. We could maybe start to work a little bit around these these forms along the edge it's a little bit too light so just creating slightly more subtle transitions um, from the edge of the shadow into the lighter portions of the face. And you can drop down into those not quite dimples. They're uh, I don't know what you call them. So again, just looking for where forms connect, and how they connect, and that sort of thing. Um, Got a little bit more specificity in those smaller forms. We're going to be somewhat limited in what we can do just because of the nature of these. I'm trying to blend all this stuff while it's all wet.
kind of naturally moving on from those those small forms and the just dipping below the mouth we can now start to work on the chin a little bit slightly too too red in that half tone so I'm just trying to neutralize it a little bit maybe just a little bit of black underneath there it's not too bad as I mentioned uh, I think in previous sessions you'll tend to find that the jaw section on men um, well, this is a reasonably young guy but um, due to the stubble will typically be a little bit grayer um, than the rest of the face similar to how the the nose tends to be a little bit more um, pinkish So you can see you can spend quite a bit of time developing these sorts of smaller forms. Okay, drop down and do a little bit in the neck, but I'm not too, not overly concerned with what's going on in the neck. We can develop some slightly more specific forms. We're going to look at some overlaps with the hair as well. Um, some of those muscular forms in the neck. So I notice this section here, you kind of you can move backwards between the lights and the darks. You notice this section in the neck maybe feels a little bit too light. Um, so I might just go back over with a bunch of Burnt umber just to darken it a bit. Which I think works a bit better there. Separates the neck slightly more from the head, which is good. Can also soften some of those transitions out of that shadow. Um, but yeah, that's starting to, to come together quite well. So, going to quite soon move on from these these smaller forms and kind of start refining some other bits and pieces in the the painting, which will take us to about probably just adding a little bit more of a highlight to this. this chin just to make it turn a bit more down into those half tones 
I'm gonna also put a reasonably clean brush so just want to increase the value up there on that brow and also this this section of the brow that juts out just before we add the half tone so I'm doing this with values kind of within the normal range I can also work on this top portion of this nose just to make it a little bit more yellow So yeah, that pretty much does it for the smaller forms in the face itself. So we can now start looking at stuff generally in the piece. Um, so jump back a bit. To the, I will actually um, work on the, the jumper, but I'm gonna do that last just because I'm using it to rest my hand. So I might skip to working on the hair uh, for the time being. So I just want to add some slight, a bit more detail in the hair. You don't need to overdo the hair. I recommend using a reasonably broad brush. Um, and generally you want to try to get your brush strokes to travel in the direction uh, that the hair is going. You'll find brushes brushes tend to kind of create because uh, they're kind of streaky by nature and they're made of hairs themselves. They'll tend to create quite a good approximation of whatever it is in terms of shape you're looking for in the hair. So I'm just going through adding some darker sections of the hair. Last time I just added yellow. So you're kind of getting, trying to get your transitions to work in a way that starts to give a sense of the highlights and that sort of thing in the hair. So that's not too far as the far as the hair goes. You can also add some sort of it's probably a little bit too thick. You can add some sections that are um kind of like thinner strands. So if you want to give a sense of the hair kind of separating and turning into strands, just find a few kind of little wayward sections that flick off. That's usually sufficient. something like that kind of gives a general sense of the hair without as you can see without adding a great deal of detail and so penultimately I'm gonna do the the background last but we're just gonna go in I'm gonna clean my brush one of my brushes we're gonna go in and add our final highlights these highlights are just going to be pure white paint. So there are certain places on the face um, for various reasons um, will be lighter than others, depending on, say, if the the figure is is wet or sweating or has a shinier face. Some people have more shiny or 
more or less shiny or matte faces. You'll get highlights in different places. Typically highlights occur, um, you might get sort of one on the forehead, it's quite common. You get some around the eyes. If the eyeball itself is catching light, there'll usually be a, a point which is bright white. So I'm gonna put a tiny dot on this eyeball of pure white and another one a tiny one just there it's quite subtle on that it's not actually catching a great deal of light I'm gonna put a fairly substantial highlight on the tip of the nose which is very often quite shiny um, I'm also gonna put a highlight just running down part of the bridge of the nose as well. So you can see that helps the nose pop out a bit and feel a bit more naturalistic. Um, the other place on this figure we've got some highlights, the, looking at my reference, usually the lips will have some highlights, so just in here, kind of running along the top of that lip. That's a little bit brighter as well. And then also a section of the top lip which is a little bit wet and catching light too. Um, and then you have a few kind of very subtle highlights, almost not highlights, um, closer to the flesh tone and the chin. And then as I say, you sometimes get some, and there is one here on this figure, just a pretty subtle one on the forehead. So we'll catch that as well. I've also got some ever so slightly highlighted sections on the tops of the cheeks with this figure so I might get them in as well yeah they help a bit they feel right within the context of it so you can feel free to play down and play up highlights as you see fit but that pretty much does it for this one and the last thing that I will do is get my big brush, here it is. Let's get my largest brush, give it as much of a clean as I can. And I'm just gonna go in and just really emphasize the blacks in this jumper and at the same time make it really clear that edge of the jumper against 